Columbia, Houston. Go ahead, Houston. Yeah, Rick, I uh, guess you've been wondering, but you are go for the deorbit burn. We are going to continue to assess uh, the, which runway end we prefer, but for now we are happy with the weather at KSC. You are go for the burn. Okay, we copied go for the burn. Right now we're leaving uh, KSC 33 in uh, until we hear otherwise. And uh, that would be our preference with a headwind, but I know you guys have to look at the energy as well. And Rick, we uh, appreciate your assessment, and uh, that's one thing we were hoping for. Uh, there are other issues, and uh, we'll give you the best option we can. Columbia in almost an 80 degree bank to the right uh, to dissipate speed. The first of four banks it performs as it uh, approaches Florida to slow down as it descends. Altitude now 47 miles or about 248,000 feet. The shuttle speed is 16,400 miles per hour. Aboard the shuttle on the flight deck are Commander Rick Husband and Pilot Willie McCool, Flight Engineer Kapana Chavla, and uh, Mission Specialist Laurel Clark. On the lower deck of the shuttle for entry are Payload Commander Mike Anderson, Mission Specialist David Brown, and Payload Specialist from the Israel Space Agency, Alon Ramon. Columbia approaching uh, the coast of California now. It'll, it's predicted to cross the coast and be visible in the San Francisco area about 5.51 a.m. Central Time, or Pacific Standard Time, rather. And uh, almost uh, directly over, pass almost directly overhead of Sacramento, California. It actually crosses the California coast uh, just to the north of the San Francisco area. Columbia is on target for runway 33 at the Kennedy Space Center shuttle landing facility runway. Uh, subject of runway selection has been discussed and mission control continues to be discussed some, but uh, in the meanwhile at present uh, the original targeting for Columbia is toward runway 33 and as it approaches runway 33 it would perform a right overhead 212 degree turn to align with that runway around the heading alignment cylinder. An imaginary cylinder created by the microwave scan beam landing system at the shuttle runway that assists in the shuttle's guidance toward its final approach to the runway. Columbia continuing in a right bank, a wings angled 43 degrees. Speed 15,000 miles per hour. Altitude 43 miles. 2,090 miles to touchdown at the Kennedy Space Center. Targeted for runway 33 at Kennedy at present. Crossing uh, the continental United States and uh, now uh, crossing above southern Nevada to the north of Las Vegas. Columbia's course continuing across Arizona and at uh, the Arizona-New Mexico border near the Four Corners area of the United States. Its course will take it almost directly above Albuquerque, New Mexico. Its altitude now 225,000 feet or 42 miles. 
Speed 14,300 miles per hour, 1,785 miles to touchdown at the Kennedy Space Center. It's banking now back to the left, the second in a series of four banks that dissipate speed of the spacecraft as it uh, becomes an aircraft and descends into the atmosphere toward Florida. Wings angled about uh, 75 degrees to the left. Columbia continuing uh, toward Florida, now approaching the New Mexico-Texas border. Altitude 40 miles. Speed 13,200 miles per hour. Range to touchdown 1,400 miles. The shuttle in the left bank with wings angled about uh, 57 degrees to horizontal. And Columbia Houston, we see your tire pressure messages and we did not copy your last. Roger. Uh, Columbia out of communications at present uh, with Mission Control as it continues its uh, course toward Florida. Fourteen minutes to touchdown for Columbia at the Kennedy Space Center. Flight controllers are continuing to stand by to regain communications with the spacecraft. This is Mission Control Houston. Flight controllers here continue in a contingency operation, uh, securing information and data. The last communications uh, with the Space Shuttle Columbia were at 8 a.m. Central Time as it uh, was flying 200,000 feet above Central Texas en route to the Kennedy Space Center for a landing. No communications have been received uh, with the spacecraft since. No tracking data of objects of any kind reported uh, by the Merritt Island tracking site and its C-band radar uh, when used to sweep the sky.
Flight Director Leroy Kane has declared a contingency. Flight controllers are securing all information and the data and notes. Uh, let's get, let's got, get Kyle Herring back on the line. Kyle Herring is public affairs officer for NASA in Houston. Uh, Kyle, what can you tell us? Uh, nothing new, Miles, that I can report to you um, at this point. You know, still uh, maintaining the same posture that we were in just moments ago. So uh, uh, there's really nothing new at this point that I can pass on to you. All right. Uh, is it, w give us a sense, Kyle, uh, with your familiarity of this, as a, as a shuttle comes in for reentry, uh, the sorts of stresses, as we look at this tape one more time from our affiliate WFAA, streaking across uh, Dallas, you see what looks like, a, looks like a streaking comet, a meteor, and um, then all of a sudden, right at that point, I don't know if you saw it, right as it hit that, went uh, behind that pole, multiple targets there, multiple streaks. Give us a sense of the kind of stress it would be enduring at that point, Kyle, going about 14,000 miles an hour or so. Well, um, uh, just based on my experience, um, with a shuttle reentry, or usually somewhere around 250, 300,000 feet in altitude at that point. So you're back in the Earth's atmosphere. Uh, that reentry into the atmosphere really occurs about 400,000 feet, and that's typically out over the Pacific Ocean. Uh, then the shuttle basically it's high speed reentry. Uh, at that point, you're probably um, going somewhere around six times, seven times the speed of sound, maybe. Um, and there's a series of high-speed uh, bank turns that are made by the computers to slow the vehicle down, All basically right. put the underside Let of the orbiter into the direction of travel to slow it down. Kyle, watch this tape with me. WFAA gave this to us. And look, right at that point, significant difference right there. Don't you agree? Oh, definitely. I mean, it's, uh, it's definitely something that... Uh, uh, occurred that we obviously at this point don't know what that is no. um, that that caused this. And then we're talking um, about stuff that we have here um, uh, exclusively as we watch this. Uh, very distinct. And uh, do you recall seeing the uh, the mirror reentry call? It's very reminiscent of that. Yes, it's it's uh, it's very similar to what would occur with a, a, a targeted reentry of something that was. Uh, uh, like a progress vehicle that we send away from the station to to burn up in the atmosphere, uh, mirrors reentry, sky labs, and anything like that. Yes. All right. Let's talk for a moment about uh, the contingencies which uh, the crew trains for ad nauseum in uh, Houston, which are, is bailout. Uh, what would be a scenario if something was going wrong at this point? What What are the options for the crew for getting out if they need to? Well, uh, I'm afraid, Miles, that there is not really an option at this altitude. Um, the, the, the bailout procedures that are uh, in place for a shuttle either during after a, 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 a engine problem on launch or, or uh, on reentry are bailout procedures that would uh, take place or be uh, in effect uh, below about um, 20, 30 to, 20 to 30,000 feet or so. Um, so much, much lower than, than what you're seeing here. Um. I should point out the crew, uh, the commander, Rick Cusband, uh, the pilot, William Willie McCool, Mission Specialist 1, David Brown, Mission Specialist 2, Kalpana Chawla, Michael Anderson, Mission Specialist 3, Laurel B. Clark, Mission Specialist 4, and the payload specialist, the first Israeli ever to fly in space on this 16-day mission, Ilan Ramon, at the tail end of what was a, a relatively flawless mission, uh, scientific mission, 16 days in orbit. Uh, what we're seeing here is very ominous indeed. These are uh, pictures which um, tell the story. That is clearly uh, the shuttle breaking up as it passes south of Texas, Dallas, Texas, near Palestine as it was coming in. Uh, communication was lost about 15 minutes prior to its anticipated landing at the Kennedy Space Center at 9.16 a.m. Eastern uh, local time.